Okay guys, so it's been a while since I've done any video about this new server build. This server build... I'm using a Core i9. It's going to be water cooled. I'm going to be overclocking the CPU. And I finally have gotten the majority of the materials required to build it. I'm going to be doing this video in at least two, maybe three parts. Um, all the brand names mentioned in this video, these are just the brand names I'm using. They are not any kind of endorsement, paid advertisement, or any of that. They're just, they're just what I'm using. So what I got here is an ASRock Z390 Tai Chi board. Supports 9th gen CPUs. 9th gen CPU. Uh, this is a... Uh, doesn't say on here. It's a Core i9-9900K. This is a gaming board. So... And it supports the use of 128 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. This is... 3200 if I remember correctly. The purposes I'm using it for, RAM speed is not quite as important, anywhere near quite as important as CPU speed is. Um, water cooled, water block. I'm actually just waiting on one of the radiators. I'm going to have two radiators in this system. I'm just waiting on one of the radiators to come in the mail. That should be in in a few days, so I should hopefully have this built by next week. However, what I can do is I can assemble the motherboard and all the components that go on the motherboard. These are nice and easy to do when they are outside of the case because you have free, easy access to everything. And then I can just put the motherboard back in the box to protect it while it sits for however long it takes for me to get the last case component and then I'll assemble the case and put it all together. Alright. motherboard manual <laughs> look at the size of that thing and it says quick installation guide <laughs> whatever IO shield this comes with a motherboard but it is a case component SATA cable not going to need that oh this is cool it's a uh, sly bridge Throw this in with my spare stuff. Wi-Fi antennas. Not going to use those since I wire this. And this is these right here. These little screws are for the NVMEs to secure those. So I need those. the third one. Here's the motherboard. Go ahead and get the rest of this stuff out of the way. Now, you guys may have seen in previous videos, but I'm going to go over it again. 
I am not overly concerned about the whole static wrist strap and all of that because I'm working directly on a metal working surface here. And this metal working surface is grounded. And I'm always leaning against it or got a hand on it. So no, con no real concerns about static electricity. So I'm going to remove this. I'll be right back. And those not, so there's two little notches right here. They jut in. And there's two notches on the CPU that line up with those little notches. So you just line those up, drop it on there, this part of the uh, securing piece goes underneath this bolt. It takes a little bit of force and you just push this down. Now before I go installing anything else, I'm going to go ahead and install a water block. This is not the latest and greatest that um, EK water cooling has done. This is a previous gen. Still isn't cheap though. The latest gen is like almost double the price, so because it's the latest and greatest. I don't need that. So, so what I have to concern myself with is see if there is a backing plate. And there is. The backing plate goes on the back of the motherboard, right here. And it provides additional strength. Oh wait, no, that's not the backing plate, that's part of the water block. Some uh, heat sinks, some water blocks have a backing plate that goes on this, that secures... Yeah, here it is. This secures the heat sink or water block to the board, but does not rely on the board withstanding the force of holding it because the board will warp or crack, causing problems. All right, let me get this out of here. Now, as you can see, there's three holes on the motherboard. These are what holds the socket retention bracket to the board. And there's three holes lined up here that line up with that. Now, we have this rubber gasket here. This is used, this is universal for older sockets, like a 775 or whatever, so it has a square cut out for if you're using an older socket. Mm, I don't think it's AMD compatible, but I could be wrong. Pretty sure this is explicitly Intel. But I'm gonna remove this. Align the shape. Align the holes. And in this, you generally want to put the smooth rounded side down. Or in this case, I think it goes like this. Let's see, is there an instruction? I'm going to assume it goes like this because it was in a packaging this way. Also, there's these ribs right here. And there's these ribs right here to rest on this part. So this particular piece is gonna go like this.
Now what we have here is the mounting hardware. Now, the way this hardware works These mount in to the front and engage into the back. Let me see here. We got two different lengths here. Again, one is for one type of socket, the other is for the other type of socket, another different type of socket. Now it also has these plastic washers. Those usually go on underneath it to protect the board. I'm trying to figure out which one I need here. There we go. This is my first time dealing with uh, a water block exactly like this one. The last water blocks I dealt significantly with were older AMD water blocks and a water block literally bolted down into the retention clip where the regular air cooler retention bracket went. I didn't have to do anything special with it. There we go. It's nice to include an extra plastic washer in case you lost one. <laughs> Tighten these down. Don't want to tighten them down too tight because you'll damage something, but they need to be good and firm. All right, cool. They will only go so far because of the threads will only screw into the bracket so far before it hits the uh, the non-threaded part of the screw. And that rubber piece is just to keep the metal from shorting out on something on there. All right. Now here's the water block. Something to pay attention to. This has input and output markings. So basically this is saying water needs to go in here and it comes out up here. And this actually includes a different gate 
to adjust the amount of water that flows through. I'm going to use a default because it's wider flow, and since I'm overclocking, I would definitely want more water going through it. Rookie mistake right here, if you don't pay any attention. Yeah, if you don't take this off, it's not going to make contact with the CPU and cool the CPU. All right. Put on the thermal compound. Now, thinking about how this is going to be, you usually want the outlet at the top so that air that gets trapped in here can get out of here when you fill it up. So, we'll place this on here. Springs. And then the torsion bolts. Or tension bolts, whatever you want to call them. Now, I've seen some kits, they include a bunch of extra plastic washers, so you can put plastic washers here as well to protect this metal from getting scra scratched. This one does not include that, but that's not a big deal. The plastic is just to protect the circuit board more than anything. Just tighten these all the way down because the threads on the posts have a stop on them that prevents these from going beyond a certain point. And the springs are what hold the tension down on the water block at that point. Next. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the fittings on here as well. I'm going to be using one 190 degree because these are all used fittings that I'm using. I already have these around so I'm not buying extra fittings. I'm going to be using 190 degree on the water block on the inlet and a straight on the outlet. These are compression fittings. Uh, when I go to do the actual installation into the case you'll get to see why I'm doing it this way. I've actually already thought about the layout of the cooling system, where the hosing's going to go, and all of that. So. You do not want to over tighten these because you will crack the acrylic. And whenever you go to reuse one, there's a little gasket right here, a little seal. You always want to make sure that seal is still above where the metal is right here. You want to make sure that that makes contact with the uh, surface of your water block, your radiator, whatever it's going to, because that's what keeps the water in the water loop. I've already checked these, they're good, so we're good there. I'm gonna go ahead and this up a little bit. I'm going to install the outlet. 
These again are used fittings, no big deal. On this one, the gasket's a little more clear to see, the seal right there, the black ring. lot of weight to this board. FYI water blocks are not lightweight. <laughs> I will be using the rest of these and the rest of the loop. These are 32 gig modules of DDR4 3200. So, I'm not laying this directly onto the surface here because the surface is metal and I don't want to damage the um, wires on the back, the solder points, put a lot of stress on those, possibly cause something to push through the board. And I also don't want to scratch this up, surface up any more than already necessary. That's why I've been using it on top of the foam. Just notice one side's a lot longer than the other. These slots have, they match up. As long as you line them up properly. You'll have no trouble. There we go. It's kind of sad my that a server I'm building has a lot more power than any of my gaming rigs do. <laughs> All right. So what I want to do next is install my SSDs. These are 512 gigabytes. I'm going to be installing Linux on the system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to install these as a RAID array, as a RAID 5 array. So that will mean I have a, I'll have a total of one terabyte of data storage. The way a RAID 5 array works, you only need three drives to do it. Basically one drive is used to maintain what's called fault tolerance. So if one of these drives just gives up the ghost on me, I don't lose all the server data. I can just replace the drive the system will recover the data that's supposed or not recover it'll rebuild the data that's supposed to be on that drive and all is golden at least in theory all right again notice there's a notch on it it's an m.2 device Generally speaking, if one side has chips, the other does not, the chip side will face up. Or the side with the biggest label will normally face up, but always check your contact orientation. That's how you know for certain. Just kind of bring it in at an angle, push it in until it stops. Grab your retaining screw. Just gently push it down, center it. Okay. 
safe and secure. And just repeat for each drive you're installing. I may at some point install some heat sinks on these. Not that there's very much in the way of chips on them, but. <laughs> and of course. So this motherboard was designed with the extra long NVMe drives in, in mind. Those are typically server type uh, drives or in the case of somebody who might be building a gaming rig on one of these, an enthusiast drive. But all I gotta do is just adjust the standoff to the proper point and no big deal Working these tiny screws can be a real pain if you're not careful. Easy to lose, easy to over torque and break. Alright, now on this board I have to remove this cover to get to the bottom NVMe slot. This cover is also act as a heat sink on this one. As you can see, it's got a little deal there. I imagine you're supposed to remove this part. Yeah. Oh, this one supports the extra long um, NVMEs as well and simply securing a heat sink to it would hold the uh, NVMe in place. That's nifty. Now what I might do at a later time is I might put a heat sink on these as well. You can get aftermarket heat sinks that you just apply to it and call it done. I've got some that I really like using. I don't have them with, with me, obviously. I'm out of them, but I got a particular like design material that I like to use. The ones I like to use are also black, so they fit nicely with this theme. <clears throat> So, 
this is everything for the motherboard. It has integrated graphics, so I don't have to install a graphics card. Now I could attempt to post this because this water block will absorb enough heat to just do a simple post to make sure it powers on. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait, wait till I've got it fully built and hopefully it all works. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, see you around next time when I get ready to install this into the actual case.